Have you ever wondered why some species survive while others become extinct? Have you ever wondered why polar bears cannot live in tropical countries, or how we humans cannot survive the cold without layers of clothing? Imagine you're having a picnic with your family in an area with a lake. You see two frogs sitting on top of a brown log. One is light green while the other one is dark green. Suddenly, a hunger gull starts flying towards the log. Which of the two different colored frogs will you think the gull will eat? The survival of individuals mainly depends on their capacity to adapt in a certain habitat. In the earlier example, since the dark colored frog blends in more with the dark log, the gull will probably spot the light colored frog first. This trend will later on lead to an abundance of dark colored frogs and scarcity of light colored ones. And so evolution goes on. But how did this all begin anyway? It all began 180 years ago, when an English naturalist named Charles Darwin set sail on the HMS Beagle. Through his five-year journey, Darwin discovered that evolution is caused by natural selection. So hold on, what is evolution, natural selection, and adaptation? And how are all of these concepts related? This documentary will actually answer all of these questions. Charles Darwin defined evolution as descent with modification, the idea that species change over time, giving rise to new species and share a common ancestor. He had always wanted to study nature, even if his father wanted him to become a doctor or a priest. So in rebellion, he embarked on a journey on sale with HMS Beagle until he discovered finches and the famous Galapagos Islands. He noticed that the survival and adaptation of finches depended on the environment that they were living in. Charles Darwin was greatly inspired by Thomas Malthus, best known for his hugely influential theories on population growth. Malthus wrote Essay on the Principle of Population in 1798, which Darwin read and was inspired by. Let's go back to Charles Darwin. While he was on his voyage in the Galapagos Islands, Darwin encountered 14 varieties of finches on the various islands. These finches differ physically in appearance, specifically through their beaks. Some finches have small beaks, while others have big ones. Darwin then concluded that characteristics of similar species vary from place to place. That is, changes occur depending on the circumstance experienced by the individual. In his Origin of Species, Darwin talked about evolution and natural selection. Evolution or change over time occurs because of natural selection. Natural selection, on the other hand, is the differential success of individuals within the population that results from their interaction within the environment. So following this, we all know that an individual has genes that results to different phenotypes. These phenotypes, or traits that individuals have, are heritable. And as you can see, are passed on to future generations. These passed on traits varies per offspring, as every offspring are different in color, size, or shape. The production of offspring is dependent on its ability to survive in a particular environment, as there is competition in resources apart from other external factors. Because of this, individuals that are able to survive, reproduce, and adapt in their life pass down these traits to the next generation. So with all of this said, an easy way to picture this is by imagining our earlier example. Skin color in frogs is a heritable trait. So the increased survival of dark green frogs means 
an increase in number of these frogs in the next generation, showing evolution by natural selection due to adaptation. So the ability of dark green frogs for survival is a component of fitness, or the measure of how well organisms survive and reproduce. Though some traits in a particular individual make him survive, trade-off also occurs. For example, though the darker frog's skin color might help him blend with his environment, he might be less attractive to potential mates. There are three general types of natural selection, namely stabilizing selection, directional selection, and finally, disruptive selection. Stabilizing selection shows that intermediate phenotypes are more fit than extreme ones. For example, a short plant may not receive enough sunlight, while a tall plant might be prone to wind damage. Thus, because of this, medium height plants are favored. In directional selection, one extreme phenotype is more fit than all other phenotypes. Our earlier example shows directional selection, wherein dark green frogs survive better as it is able to blend with the dark box. And finally, disruptive selection is when both extreme phenotypes are more fit than those in the middle. In an environment with light and dark green plants, individuals with the same colors will survive more than medium colored dark green ones. Natural selection can also alter genetic variation among local populations due to differences in environmental conditions in the process of genetic differentiation. Species having a wide geographic distribution encounters different environmental conditions that can give rise to variations in morphological, physiological, and behavioral characteristics as seen in clines, ecotypes, and subspecies. A cline is a result of gradual genetic changes within a species that is stretched over a large area. These changes can be brought about by abiotic factors, like different temperatures, as well as biotic factors. For example, some plants taste more bitter than the other. On the other hand, Ecotype is when a population that is able to adapt to local environment conditions. For example, if the environment is moist, then plants will grow longer roots as to compared to when the environment is arid, where it will only produce shallow roots. However, changes in genetic variation within populations can also be seen in other processes, such as mutation, genetic drift, as well as assortive mating. Mutations or alterations in genes or chromosomes can either be beneficial, neutral, or harmful. For example, sickle cell anemia is caused by a single gene code letter change in DNA and can bring about pain called sickle cell crisis. Genetic drift is the change in allele frequency as a result of random chance. For example, if in a garden a fire destroys all yellow plants leaving blue ones behind, then blue will now become the dominant allele. Migration also causes genetic variation, as seen every day in OFWs. People of different nationalities mate. For example, an American can mate with a Chinese, producing an offspring with chinky eyes, but very tall height. These random mating cases of natural selection, mutation, genetic drift, and migration exhibit the Hardy-Weinberg principle, wherein there is no evolutionary change occurring, but rather the process of sexual reproduction itself. Assortative mating, on the other hand, is when individuals choose to mate non-randomly based on some phenotypic trait. When they choose mates similar to themselves, it is called positive assortative mating, while if they choose mates different from themselves, it is now termed negative mating, as shown here 
An example is a deaf person marrying another deaf person, which shows positive assortative mating. So the next time you wonder why some species survive while others become extinct, or why polar bears cannot live in tropical countries, and how we humans need layers of clothing to survive, you can finally have answers to these questions. Thank you.